This tutorial will show you how to make fonts using Adobe Illustrator and FontSelf, which is a cool extension for Illustrator. I'm going to make my fonts on a grid and then try to make them feel more natural like calligraphy using a few processes that are built into Illustrator. So I'm starting with an Adobe Illustrator file that's just 32 uh, pixel grid with 32 subdivisions. If you wanted to change that, you would under, go under uh, Preferences, Guides and Grid, and here you can see my um, grid line every and then subdivisions. So calligraphy, as I'm envisioning it, has uh, a different width of line depending on the direction of the line. So I'm going to take that to the extreme and make my vertical lines thick and my horizontal lines thin. And I'm just going to build a font uh, based on that approach starting um, with a uh, just a few simple boxes. Uh, might as well get started with the lowercase a. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool and uh, just diving right in here, I'm going to draw a four pixel wide rectangle. Um, and now that's what I'm going to set my vertical size and I'll draw a two pixel wide rectangle for my horizontals. And then do the same down here. I'll draw a um, four pixel wide one here. All right, now that could be an O or anything. So how do we make it look like an A? I think probably the easiest way would be to make it a two story A. So I'm just going to lower, selecting these parts up here, I'm lowering them a bit. And then I'll draw another story or section of the A, like the part that comes across the top. Um, and this one, maybe I won't make it quite so thin as those other horizontals, but eh, let's try that. I'll give it uh, just a two pixel. You know, the grid isn't like a rule. You can sort of break it once in a while and make some of your lines uh, a little different depending on the, your style. So anyway, um, that's a pretty decent looking lowercase a. And uh, um, what I'm going to do to this A to make it feel like calligraphy is select it, first dragging a rectangle around it, and then using the Unite Pathfinder. And what this does is it turns all these rectangles to a single uh, letter. And um, at this point, um, I don't normally use these corner widgets, but they are handy in cases like this. Uh, when I go to my direct selection tool, I can see these little circles appearing at the corners. Uh, and these are kind of little shortcuts to create rounded angles. Um, this is great to use in uh, limits. So you don't want to like always you know, click every single one and, and drag it and then get something like that, which looks weird. Um, another thing I'm noticing about my shape is that I have a lot of extra points. And when you're making fonts, straight points like these guys here are always a, a good idea to get rid of. So we're going to go to the pen tool and I put my mouse over top of them and I get a little minus sign. And that means I can delete those points by just clicking on them. Okay, so that's a pretty clean A at this point. All right, so then I'll go to my direct selection tool. And now, instead of clicking on all of my, no, I clicked on the center of the A, I want to just click on certain parts. So let's start with this point here. And we're going to click and drag this um, little uh, corner widget up and to the left so that I get a curved bowl of the A here. Do the same here. We can also take this one in here and pull it in. And let's do this one here. I'm kind of using the grid as a way to make sure that I'm consistent with the curve curvature of the uh, corners. So by going, keeping the, again that modular approach to that grid using two uh, pixels to drag in. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So the last thing I'm going to do is give it a tilt. Uh, the the um, free transform tool is good for this, and we may want to tilt it. Uh, whoops, that wasn't good. Let's first um, deselect, and now I'll click the uh, shape again, and now we'll go back to the free transform tool. I'm just going to just shift it or skew it about uh, three pixels there. And um, and that's 
pretty much it. I mean, we would take the same approach for the rest of the letters. So I'll do a couple more and then we'll get to the font self part. Okay, so I've got a bunch of, or a few letters to just demonstrate with, and I'm going to go to font self. So I have that installed under Windows, Extensions, Font Self Maker. And I guess I have an update, but I won't do that just yet. We're going to create a new font. And we'll hit New Font. And I'm going to choose the A to Z option on the top right. Oh, I guess I have to select them first. All right, we'll just select them. And then uh, let's hit uh, OK. OK, I guess let's do this over again. Here, I got my three letters. So I'm going to go to A to Z. And uh, it wants me to have 26. So um, I forgot that it wouldn't work unless I had 26 letters which is fine. I mean, normally I would just draw the rest of the letters and be done. But you can always do these uh, individually by just uh, dragging them individually, anything, and then uh, labeling it with the letter that it is, A and B. And C. And I would just continue on until my entire font was done. It's pretty simple to export the font after that. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, if you look up here at this export, um, you'll see that uh, the, the uh, option to, to generate an open type font appears, and, and you'll be off and running. Thanks for watching.